All right, so this uh, is principally being recorded to address a question on the Power Users Forum, but it demonstrates a couple of pretty useful concepts and, and patterns that uh, might apply to other scenarios. So I figured I would record a quick video and show you what I mean. So in that particular question or, or uh, post in the message board, someone has a uh, two lists where items in the second list are related to items in the first list by way of a uh, an ID column that's in list two that stores the ID number of an item in list one. And I have a number of combination uh, of systems like that, uh, projects like that in SharePoint where uh, we have something like a request list uh, and then a, uh, a separate list which I usually call the audit list or the, the history log or something like that. Basically, whenever, you know, as something is being worked through, as a request is being processed through the approval, um, each step of the process will write an entry into that audit list to record what happened. So if nothing else, we have a way to go back and audit those events to see what you know where in the process things fell apart or verify that everything happened correctly. So in this case we have a, a system or a, an app in Power Apps that students use to request submit proposals for um, extra credit projects more or less uh, and that goes through a two-step approval process for from first it's been approved by the their academic department and then it needs to be approved by their instructor as well uh, and as part of that that process is called the honors option uh, proposal process and I created a you know the, the proposal list is honors option proposals but then the audit list is something I call the honors option log uh, and that list itself is has columns for essentially the action that occurred you know was it was the, a new request submitted? Did the department approve it? Did the instructor approve it, etc.? Uh, and then there's you know a timestamp column and a you know a couple other columns, but one of them is the uh, store is a person column storing the identity, the claims value of the person who took the action. So if it's that the proposal was submitted, then it will be the student's um, UPN or user principal name. That's stored there uh, and it also includes a column called proposal ID which is the ID number of their proposal item so what I'm doing here in you know, I basically build a quick manual flow and I'm just uh, there are a number of ways to, to trigger this but for the sake of demonstration I'm just using a manual trigger and defeat created an input for proposal ID where I'm going to type in a number of a proposal and then it's going to uh, basically in the get items action here we're going to go to that SharePoint site and that list and filter it to those items where proposal ID is equal to the input from the trigger pretty basic uh, and then from that we're going to use a select action uh, and select basically allows you to identify or, or I should say filter down for lack of a better term an array of data into specific columns of that data so for the from the the input of this I'm going to select value which is the list of items returned from the get item step and then normally this map field requires you to put in a key so you would have you know actor and then whatever the the value is the, the dynamic content value but you can also switch this to text mode and say just grab me a single value so rather than building an array of you know key value pairs we're just collecting an array of those values which is what we ultimately want so i'm going to switch to that the text mode and what I want is the action taken by email and again remember that person columns in SharePoint are complex columns so there are multiple values associated and in this case I want the email not the display name not the claims not the 
department, but the email. So I'm going to select that. Um, and then, so what that's going to do is for all of, for each of those items that are retrieved, it's going to return just the action taken by email value and produce that as a single column array. And then what I can use is a join action. Now you could do this as an, in an expression as well, but I'm doing it in a, uh, using the join action specifically just to demonstrate that it exists. Uh, but I'm taking the, now the output of that select action and I'm joining it with a comma. Now, comma is pretty standard for separating values, but you could use another character here if you'd like. You could use a semicolon, you could use a space, you could use a pipe character, it's your call. Uh, but I'm going to leave it set as column, uh, I'm sorry, comma. And then down here I just have a compose step where I'm just going to basically re return the output of that join action so that we can see that it worked, that it did what we wanted to do. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to run this and I'm going to give it a particular value, let's say 1745, I believe that's one of the actual proposals, so let's run that, I'll click done, and there we go. Now there are other ways to do this, you could use loops and whatnot, but I found select and, and join to be kind of the most efficient way to do this. You know, in this case, this flow ran in literally 44 milliseconds. Uh, if you use a loop, that immediately runs it up into the maybe 10 or 12 or 15 second range. Uh, so just to see what actually happened, we got the items. Let's just take a quick look. So we've got... Oh, nothing was returned let me let me try that with a different let me run with a different uh, proposal id because apparently that one didn't exist let me run that again 1741 i know this one exists because i tested it earlier let's run that again and there we go so we go into our get items and we look at the output of that and we will see what we're actually dealing with so there we go we're getting a bunch of data back so I know that this was an actual process or proposal so now let's just take a look at what we get from select so select is getting all of these you know basically from that output it's returning just the action taken by email so action taken by email and producing a single column array of just those email addresses separated by commas our join operation is taking all of those outputting them as comma separated email addresses beautiful and and our compose is just basically repeating that. So if I wanted to, let's say, send an email to all of the people involved in this, uh, I might want to, because in some cases there are, you know, the same actor was repeated multiple times, I might want to use something like union or, or some other action to deduplicate this. But this achieves the results. Um, so again, the con basic concept is get your items filtered to items where the ID matches the ID number of the item in your first list. Select from that whatever value it is you want to retrieve. In this case it was the email of the person who took the action. Uh, join that with a comma and then output that and do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, so there you go. That That is a quick example of how to easily retrieve specific data values from a list of items in a SharePoint list.